Uh, we wanted to engage this article. It is on something called medium.com and it is by Kwaku. Uh, Kwaku was on recently here on Apologia Radio uh, with Dr. White and myself. We discussed some issues. It was actually a really interesting uh, conversation. If you haven't seen yet, I encourage you to check through the thread here on the videos here on Apologia Studios and check out that episode. I think it'll uh, be helpful to you. Um, he wrote an article for Medium, and this is the title of the article. The title of the article is The Insecurity of Calvinism. The Insecurity of Calvinism. Now, I want to just start, and you guys feel free to jump in at any moment here. I want to start by saying that one of the great struggles I had with Kwaku while he was on the show, um, and in watching his shows where he talks about Christian theology and doctrine is that he demonstrates that he hasn't done his homework. Mm -hmm. uh, so he, uh, I, it, from, from my perspective, he doesn't have a lot of my respect in this area because he hasn't done his homework to say, to accurately represent the person he's trying to cr critique. Right. Yeah. And I think what's frustrating is you guys corrected him on the show. We did a show last week, again, correcting him. And then he comes out with this article still saying the same things even though he's been corrected multiple times it demonstrates that he did not listen yeah. because you even touched on this very subject that yeah. we're going to talk about you touched yeah. on predestination you touched on the will of man as a creature and how he's not a robot right you touched on the will of man making choices as a free agent but he chooses consistently with his, what his nature is what his nature is and this article reflects that there was no listening right on that point yeah he he, he makes very clear that he did not take that in Right. And he did not represent um, what Reformed theology teaches, essentially what the Bible teaches yeah. about man's will. So right. that's just one example. It's exactly. one example. And I think, you know, there are people, I want to say this, there, there are people um, who disagree with Reformed theology. I would say they're, they're in disagreement with the Apostle Paul and Jesus and the New Testament and, and many in the historic church and, of course, during the time of Reformation. But they're still brothers in the Lord, and they do not do what men like Kwaku does, and that's misrepresent us. They try to take this from the angle of the scriptures. Let's see what the Bible really says here. But they're at least, they at least have the integrity to not misrepresent our position. So one of, one of my friends, Dr. Michael Brown, he is a brother in the Lord, a, a, a stellar follower of Jesus. I love him. He's a friend. Um, he, we have disagreements in this area. He's debated Dr. White in this area. Um, he doesn't want to misrepresent his Calvinist brothers. He yeah. wants to represent faithfully. He just has disagreements. So there's a man who has disagreement over this area, but doesn't try to misrepresent. <laughs> there are other men uh, who disagree with uh, us at Apologia Church. They're brothers in the Lord. Uh, but they, they, you can tell that they are working hard to make sure they represent our position accurately. So they deserve our respect yeah. Yeah. they deserve our respect and they're brothers in the lord um i believe that they're wrong of course but they're still brothers in the lord and they have my respect a uh, person like kwaku has no respect from my perspective uh in this area because he chooses to to um, misrepresent the people that he's arguing against now if i had done that to mormons if i lied about what mormons believe if I uh, created fictitious quotes from their prophets and leaders, then of course I would deserve to be condemned, rightly. Well, you know what's funny about that is we get criticized a lot for misrepresenting them, but all we are doing is is just quoting, quoting yeah. the prophets right. and apostles, and mm -hmm. yeah. So I was just going to say quickly, this article is a is a big field of burning scarecrows. It's just yep. one straw man <laughs> after another. Each point he tries to make another straw man up in flames. And uh, yeah, it's 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 fun. Let's get to it. Cool. Let's you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. I'm gonna go through it, guys. Stop me at any time. All right. Here we go. And uh, thank you all for wish uh, watching. Please go to apologiastudios.com to get more. God arranges all things by His sovereign counsel in such a way that individuals who are born are doomed to the womb to certain death. I think it says, should say from the womb and are to glorify him by certain destruction. That's a quote from John Calvin. That is how Kwaku leads off the article. And here we go. On any given Sunday, practicing Christians of all denominations find themselves in the pews or chairs of their respective church building. First, he's assuming he's a Christian. Mm-hmm. Okay, continue. Each denomination will affirm the existence of God 
Yes. They may consider Which God? A, uh, they may consider God to be a man with a body reflective of you and I. Sorry, Kwaku. We see what you're trying to sneak in there. Now, which Christian denomination? Right. Exactly. Um, Orthodox, meaning standing on the words of Scripture, actually believes that. Yeah. No one. Kwaku, we realize what you're trying to do here, and that is you're trying very, very hard um, as as an act of PR, uh, public relations for the Mormon Church, to um, squeeze Mormon theology into the historic Christian faith, and you just simply are not. You are part of a false communion. It is not a Christian church. You preach a false God and a false gospel. Your Jesus is not the Jesus of Scripture, and God does not have a body of flesh and bone as tangible as man. They may consider God to be a man with a body reflective of you and I. No, that's Mormonism. Mm. Uh, that is the idolatry of Mormonism, the false god of Mormonism. If we're to look at what the Bible says about God, it says God is spirit, and uh, those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And when Jesus describes spirit, and I talked about this in the last episode, yeah. he says, handle me and see to Thomas, he says, spirit does not have flesh and bone as you see me have. Um, that's his definition of spirit, and so, no. Um, and keep in mind, this is one of an infinite number of gods he's talking about. That's right. They may consider God to be a Trinitarian essence or a modalist spirit okay so this and this is what this is the first point that really upset me because again we we talked about this last week on last week's show he in the show he did with dr white he claims that he did not misrepresent the trinity and you went back and in the show on the three mormon show that's exactly what he said yes we corrected him on this and he's still saying the same thing we are not saying essence at all that he is that his essence is divided right right I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what he means exactly by that. Yeah, it's a little muddy. It's muddy. Yet each denomination can and will affirm the existence of God. Regardless, each denomination will affirm that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and Savior of mankind. Whether they believe Jesus is just a form of the Father, a spirit brother of mankind. There you go, Kwaku, once both, again. Both false doctrine there. Yeah, of course. But Kwaku, we, we see what you're trying to do, my friend, and that's squeeze uh, Mormonism into the denomination yeah. uh, category of Christianity. It is not. It's a non-Christian cult. That's what Mormonism is. Uh, so whether they believe Jesus is just a form of the Father, uh, a spirit of brother of mankind, or a heavenly influenced teacher who became perfect, each canon will affirm Jesus Christ Yeshua to be the Son of God. None of those are orthodox views of, yeah. of Christ. A heavenly uh, influenced teacher who became perfect is not Yeshua. Right. Yeshua is not a mere man. That's the point of yeah. standard Christian doctrine is that he is the eternal God. Yeah, Christian theology is uh, very well defined uh, both in, of course, the writings of Scripture, um, uh, the New Testament, Old Testament, but also all the way into the first, second, third, fourth centuries of the church. You have the Christian church very clearly defining what we believe about Jesus Christ. You have the earliest um, uh, uh, heresies creeping into the church, say, in the second century, whether it was the no whether it was the Gnostics, whether it was uh, Sabellianism, whether it was modalism, uh, to Arianism, all, all of those different isms were creeping into the church, and the Christian church responded with confession and creed. Um, you can even find fights taking place with Tertullian near the end of the second century AD, uh, clearly defining what we believe about Jesus Christ and uh, talking about the Trinity. You can even find Santa Claus decking people over it. You can, yeah, old Saint Nick. <laughs> Um, so here's what's, I, I know we're going point by point here. I just want to make this very, very clear. Kwaku, the way you demonstrate a, a pure ignorance about Christianity, orthodoxy, biblical theology, uh, and it's just clear that this is just a PR piece to try to promote ultimately Mormonism and to try to cast Mormonism into just another denomination of the Christian church. It is not. Whether they believe Jesus is just a form of the Father, heresy, cast out by the, the historic Christian church mm -hmm. in the second century. Um, <clears throat> a spirit brother of mankind, that's Joseph's perverse theology. Or a heavenly influenced teacher who became perfect. Um, that sounds uh, maybe a little new agey, maybe? I don't know. Each canon will affirm Jesus Christ, Yeshua, to be the Son of God. Okay, here we go. At face value, this inde would indeed make Christianity the same at its core. No. At face value, this would indeed make Christianity the same at its core. How? In yeah. what way? Having were... all of these false Christs, false characterizations of God, and then somehow constructing this 
inclusivity where, oh, as long as we say Jesus, as long as we use the terminology son of God, it doesn't matter what we actually believe about that. Right. Jesus can be just a mere prophet and still be the means of salvation. No, the Bible is very clear about defining the son of the living God, what that means, who Jesus is, and the reality that it is only through the biblical Christ. It is only through the Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Yeshua, that is presented in scripture, you can be saved. It's only through him. So if you don't have the true Christ, you are dead in your sins. Jesus says, unless you believe that ego a me, I am, he takes the divine title of Yahweh and applies it to himself saying, unless you have me, there is none other. I am, you're gonna die in your sins because guess what? I'm God and I'm the only one that's authorized to forgive your sins. Just like that story in the, in the gospels where you have, you know, the religious leaders are all upset with Jesus. They say, how dare you pronounce forgiveness of sins right. on this person that you just healed, right? right? I think it was the paralytic, right? Yeah. And um, well, he says, well, by the way, just so you know that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins, hey, take up your mat and walk. Mm -hmm. The sign was a pointer to the divine reality that Jesus can forgive sins because right. he's God That's in right. the flesh. The sign itself was not the thing. Mm -hmm. The sign was a pointer to God in flesh being the one that has the authority and the power to forgive sins by nature of who he is. Yes. That's right. That's the point. Yeah. They knew only God can forgive sins and be blasphemy right. to claim to do it. That's why they were offended. That's why they were very offended. That's right. And the fact that he says, take up your bed and walk demonstrates that he has the prerogatives both ways. He gets to, he gets to say this and he gets to say that your sins are forgiven. And that's a good point. I mean, unless you believe the ego in me, you will die in your sins. I am. Don't forget. So important. <laughs> that's where he says before Abraham was ego in me, I am. And they picked up stones to kill him. They knew what he was saying. They knew what he was saying. Yep. Proof is right after that. Jesus says, many good works have I shown you from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? And they said, for thy good works we stone thee not, but for blasphemy that you being a man make yourself God. Mm -hmm. They knew what he was saying. And they knew that it was impossible for any human being to say that they are God or have divine, divine prerogatives, unless of course he actually is God. Mm. So here we go. Uh, just to point out that this is not just a unique thing that Apologia Church, these reformed guys, these Calvinists are saying about <laughs> yeah, their right. specific little Jesus. Let's go to the writings of scripture. Don't forget in the second, uh, first century of the church, you had the earliest beginnings of Gnosticism creeping into the church. The apostle John and Paul deal with Gnosticism and Gnostic thought in the New Testament itself. Um, and so you've got these false versions of Jesus already creeping into the church in the first century of the church and they were being fought against. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 11, this is what Paul says in that context. Verse 3, I'm afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaimed, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or if you accept a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it readily enough. That's a way of saying, you might even put up with these people. He's worried about them. I'm worried that you're gonna be deceived, like Eve, by Satan's craftiness. Another Jesus, someone will come and preach a different Jesus than the one that we preach. And he says, and I'm afraid you're gonna put up with it. You're yeah. gonna just let it go. And so this is Paul in the first century dealing with false Christs, false spirits, false gospels. So when we as the Christian church point out that the Mormon Jesus is a false Christ, it's not just us being big meanies, just trying to cross every <laughs> theological T and dot all the I's. This is us as Christians, Orthodox, yes. historic, real, genuine followers of Jesus who are saying, we are following the pages of scripture here and saying that's a false Christ. Yep, yep. One more here, just to show you this coming from John. This is from the Apostle John. He has a deal. This is such a short little letter, but it was so serious to the, to the Apostle John. He's worried um, about the church, and he says this, watch yourselves, 2 John verse 8, watch yourselves so that you may not lose what we have worked for, but may win a full reward. Everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. 
Whoever abides in the teaching of, has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him a greeting, for whoever greets him takes part in his wicked works. Of course, this is talking to a house church in the first century. Don't let this person into your worship. Don't let him into your home to disrupt your worship, your fellowship, your communion. And what is that? They are these deceivers, John says, and here's what they're doing. Those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh, they were denying that God had taken on flesh. Yep. This is dealing with the earliest beginnings of Gnosticism creeping into the church. And John says this, look, these Gnostics who are saying they believe in Jesus, they're saying they're followers of Jesus, but they're saying that God would never take on flesh. He would never do that because this, this is evil. Creation is dirty. Yeah. This is dirty and broken and evil. God would never sully himself with human flesh. Mm. There, John says, anybody does that, they profess to believe in Jesus, but they deny that God took on flesh. He says, this person is antichrist. They don't know God. Do not even let him into your house. That's not very nice. <laughs> so, Kwaku, when you write this article and you say, hey, all these Jesuses, they're all welcome. Right. Whatever denomination. I would say, tell that to the apostles John and, P and, and Paul. <coughs> tell that to them that they should just be welcoming to all these different versions of Jesus. No, I'm sorry. It sounds like universalism yep. to me. Well, it's, it's inclu it's, how would you say it? It's inclusivism. So to summarize it, it's only exclusive faith in the exclusive Christ that will save anybody. And that's why this matters. Because you have a different Jesus, then you have no hope of being saved. Or have salvation. Yeah, and I That's think the point. yeah, I think one final word here. Isn't it interesting that uh, Kwaku has all this room in his theology for all these different versions of Jesus, but he doesn't have room for the sovereign Jesus who rules over all. 